everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode 63 <laughs> and I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. It is dark and early here. It just, um, it's not raining. It's just dark. <laughs> I am actually heading this morning to the Museum of Anthropology, which is um, on the UBC campus, the University of British Columbia. And I am taking my mum and our guild is actually taking the curator's tour of a cloth exhibit this morning. So I thought I would record really early and um, then I'm going to go to uh, the MOA, which is the Museum of Anthropology, and uh, pick up my mom and go and have a really cool day with a bunch of ladies who are as passionate about textiles as I am. And some of them are even more passionate <laughs> about textiles than I am. So I'm really excited about that. Um, episode three of Woolen Spinning Radio is live. If you're a Patreon subscriber, I forgot to mention it last week. So if you haven't headed over to Patreon in a while and you haven't had a look, please um, go and do so because episode three is waiting for you. Uh, and it is a conversation um, about combo spinning. <laughs> and Katrina comes on and does a little uh, cameo. So it's a, it was a fun episode to do. It was an answer to uh, Rebecca's question about something that she was working on at the time. So I have tabled color studies for just a couple of weeks. I haven't, I didn't talk about color studies last week and I didn't, I'm not going to talk about it this week. Um, I thought I would just take a little break from color studies through March because I'm actually down to my last 25 grams of the sunset colorway to spin. And so that'll, I'll have four weeks worth of stuff to talk about for color studies in April. So I'm going to be back with color studies next week. If you're curious about color studies and you're wondering what's going on, please head over to the Ravelry group, Wool and Spinning. And for those who are Patreon subscribers uh, and supporters of the show, thank you to you guys. You keep the show on the air week after week. Um, we will be uh, launching another, uh, the next set, sort of, the next part of color studies, uh, April 1st. So please stay tuned for that. Um, we are going to move into looking at color carded. So we're going to stick with our compliments theme and we're going to move into what it, that looks like to card uh, when you're working with carded fiber. So there will be some notifications heading out from me in Patreon for you guys about that. So please just stay tuned and um, I hope you'll join in with us. I This week's show has some sampling, which I haven't done for a while, some spins in progress and some uh, woven a woven project, which is really exciting. So I hope you'll stay tuned. Wednesdaydale spin is done. Um, I have finished my bobbins and I'm actually just, I put them aside, I'm letting them rest. 
uh, for a couple weeks. I don't normally let bobbins rest. I just kind of go right in and apply them. I don't tend to let my bobbins pile up. The only reason why I'm doing so is because I'm not totally sure how I'm going to spin it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a boucle, but I'm just sort of um, make, trying to make a decision about that. So I thought I would show some of my other um, whips today instead that I've kind of just started. And um, one of the things that I've been working on is some sampling. So let me just find in my basket here. Here it is. All right. So I had some cotton in my stash and I had sort of been exposed to spinning a little bit of cotton from my friend Diana and she has um, a tackly which is a little metal spindle. It's a type of supported spindle and I had she had let me try it and I just couldn't get it at all. I was still sort of coming back to spinning and getting my hands back if you will and I just couldn't get it. But um, I thought I would tackle it now because I had a little bit in my stash and I also had some carrier rod silk. So it looks like this when it comes and it's very stiff and it's dirty and what carrier rod silk is is it's actually the reeled silk as they're reeling silk um, some of it gets stuck on the rods that they're reeling on and this stuff is treated as waste but the thing is and they have to cut it off but the thing is is that um, it's still silk and it's usually quite beautiful silk and so if you degum it and wash it um, you have a really gorgeous product at the end so I've actually dyed up some of my carrier rod silk and this has been sitting in my stash forever so I degummed a bunch of it and it ends up being this really soft stuff and it's really short fibered but it's still beautiful silk it's really soft and um, it's this is clean mine um, I bought I, I had in my stash I had I had plain white I had bought it a while ago so I dyed up a bunch of it and this is actually still a little bit wet but I dyed up a bunch of it in these crazy bright colors and I have been taking it and I have been carding it with my cotton and I have been carding up uh, and spinning a little bit of long draw on my Lundrum. I'm using the fastest uh, ratio on my Lundrum that I can which is 17 to 1 on my laced flyer and I've been doing these little two ply samples with the carrier rod. So um, it made me realize that I didn't degum the lace uh, the silk sorry quite to the extent that I needed to and I, I'm gonna do it again um, the way that you degum and the reason for degumming is to take the saracen off of the silk and some people argue that even if you're spinning like a BFL silk a merino silk um, anything with a silk blend in it that you should be degumming it and getting the saracen off I in my experience um, I haven't done that a lot but I've started doing it with some some of my stuff so like stuff like this and I'm finding I'm getting better results um, the silk is more um, lusterous and it um, I'm finding that it has more of a sh that that lustrous sheen it feels cleaner um, so if you go to warmspit.com they walk you through the whole process of how to degum but basically you need an alkaline and a surfactant um, and an alkaline is washing ash washing soda and um, so that's usually in the um, housekeeping aisle at a grocery store you don't want to buy baking soda you want to buy the actual washing soda it has the same emblem on it but it it says washing soda and then Orvis paste and I can get Orvis paste locally here in Vancouver from Miwa and um, there's a recipe on wormspit.com that tells you how much I've got silk in my nose. Um, I guess there are worse things. Um, there's there there's a recipe on on warmspet.com that sh tells you what ratio to use um, of the um, washing ash and the saracen, and you add it to water and you dissolve it all up and mix it all up and then you bring it to a boil, but you don't add your silk yet. Um, and then you bring it down to a bubbling simmer and you put your silk in there for 30 minutes and um, the Saracen when it comes off like when I did this stuff I didn't leave it in for quite long enough I think I, I pulled it out a bit too soon but when you degum it like that 
um, this really slimy slippery solution comes off if it hasn't been degummed at all so you'll often get like quite a bit off because these were quite dirty um, it's almost like dealing with raw silk kind of so um, have a look over there if you're interested in learning more about degumming your silk and I will keep you posted on my little cotton samples this is the first time that I've actually been able to produce a skein of cotton and it was really funny because at first when I first started spinning um, and I've spun cotton before but not with much success um, it started immediately getting really thick or really thin and I was like ah oh, like what what is it that I'm doing that I keep getting it really really thin and it's so thin that it just breaks and um, so I I stopped pulling my hand back so far because of course cotton is like a little cloud right it's just got this teeny teeny tiny staple length and um, I that's what gave me the success was I was moving my hand back too far like as if I was spinning wool or merino and I needed to keep my hand there and and allow more of the fibers to be picked up in that twist so that was a great uh, uh, sort of a great aha moment for me and it created some really really pretty yarn with the white cotton and the uh, silk it's very tweedy and now I'm wishing I had a bigger sample that I could actually knit some up with and see what it looks like knit up so that's my next project uh, the other thing that I have on my wheel is some Bastador fiber. It, this is from uh, Chile, from my friend Nina. This was one of the colorways that she sent me. She sent me two different types of yellows, um, a dark navy black and this one. And I'm going to use the four of them together in a project because they are so my colors. Um, but this is a uh, sheep that lives in southern Chile. And um, I actually talked to Nina about this fiber and about what this woman is doing and it's called Bastador. There is a website but it's quite, um, um, it's not a great website. And um, these sheep are crosses of uh, Corriedale and Merino and the fiber is not, I, I think it's quite soft and I really quite like it. Um, and I really like the hand of the, of the yarn that you get from this. Um, Nina's been carding it up with um, and making tweeds out of it which I just think is gorgeous so I'm thinking I'm going to spin this one just plain two ply and I'm going to do it the light yellow that she sent me just a plain two ply but then the darker yellow and the darker navy I'm going to card in some white silken oil and create like a tweed yarn for both of those and then I'm going to try to use the four of them together in some sort of a massive shawl um, and I'm trying not to put too too much ply twist in it because the longer staple length from the influence of the Corriedale um, it doesn't need a lot of twist and it keeps the hand of the yarn soft and then what I'll do is of course apply it back with a, a not a ton of twist I'm not going to do like a massively plied two ply like I don't I don't like my yarns really really super super tightly plied as you guys know but I'm going to do something that sort of sits with a with a moderate amount of twist so that is sort of what I'm thinking um, anyways I'll keep you guys posted on that and and let you know how that goes it's just a plain kind of a nice like autopilot spin you know I don't like to call it potato chip because it's not a potato chip spin because I still have to pay attention for consistency and all that kind of stuff but it is nice to have those spins that are a little bit more autopilot-y. So last show I talked about Fibers West and we had such a great weekend and um, we're, we're all still kind of buzzing from, from it. But while I was um, vending with Katrina and standing in the booth and whatnot, I took my Turkish spindle. And this is my Kapar. Um, it is uh, from um, Natural Knotwood um, on Etsy. He's based in Winnipeg, Manitoba. So if you're looking for a Canadian spindle maker, um, check him out. Ken, Ken Kapar, I think, or Wayne Kapar. I can't remember if he's Ken or Wayne, and I don't know why. I think it's because I have like John Wayne in my in my mind, like cowboy extraordinaire or something. I don't know. Um, so I got three turtles almost plied. So this is actually two little mini skeins. They're both like 45 yards. And um, this is Katrina's colorway. This is one of her one of her debut 
hand paints. So I have two skeins. I applied these both at the show and then I have one more to go that I'm almost, almost done. I might actually take this to the gallery show today. And this is her Lava Love colorway. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's her, one of her debut hand paints. And one of the things, these aren't really my colors, um, but because of the amount of navy blue that, that she put into it, it makes this really dark, dark and handsome skeiny yarn. I don't know how else to describe it. This is on 100% Targi, which I love spinning. I love 100% Targi. Um, it's got a slight, I, I like the hand of it a little bit better than Coriadale. Yeah, James? I don't want this. Okay, I'll come and help you in a sec, okay? Just watch the you camera. Know, the office is off. The office is all messy. It is. There's a lot of equipment, isn't there? Okay, let's go. Let's go help you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, come on up. Yeah, Robin on Instagram. She always describes her skeins as dark and handsome, and I just love that for this skein because it really—that's exactly what it ended up being. Um, the 100% Targi. It it because Targi come from um, they're cro they're a sheep that was crossed. Um, Lincoln and merino and Corydale, I think. Um, I might be wrong about that, but we looked it up several times at the show and I feel like that's what we came up with. Um, it's on Wikipedia. The, um, it, it has a, a nice, nice sprungy hand to it. Um, and it has a drape to it probably because of the Wensleydale in influence, or I think it's Lincoln because of the Lincoln influence. Um, but it's crimpy and sprungy because of the merino and i really like it because i i think it's a slightly more interesting wool than just plain coriadale and i love coriadale i'm not dissing on coriadale but i think um it's just a neat fiber um this is actually going to be house socks i'm going to eventually turn them into house socks for me and um i'm sort of excited to see how they'll wear because i've never had targi socks and i sort of want to see what the how they wear. So I'll keep you posted on that because I have this little bit left to finish and then I have the whole other 50 grams to spin. So fingers crossed that it happens quickly. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not under any illusions that it's going to be quick because <laughs> uh, my spinning these days seems to be very slow and I seem to have like multiple projects on the go right now. Like I don't know why I've like I just can't stay focused on one thing and I think it's because I'm kind of excited about all the things right now. So it is what it is, I guess. All right, the last thing that I wanted to share with you today was my da, 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 um, hand spun woven scarf. So this, you saw this a little bit of a teaser a few weeks ago and I said that I would talk about it in the next show and I never got to it. Um, this is my hand spun, hand woven scarf that I did. Um, I haven't woven in the ends yet and I haven't dealt with the fringe yet. So there will be some photos eventually of sort of all of this finished. Um, I hem stitched both ends. The yarn, let me talk about the yarn first. So the yarn was a combo spin from my uh, stash and it was a study on grist and it was um, a combo of leading men fiber arts and spunky eclectic one was Polworth one was merino and the colors were very similar and they really worked well together and there were these hits of red and I'll see if I can find them these hits of red in the spunky eclectic and then these hits of brown in the leading men fiber arts and it kind of all just worked it just matched up in perfect places and the skein of yarn was really gorgeous it was overspun, and i had thought about putting it back through the wheel and taking some of that twist out but it was a three ply and i thought you know what i'm just going to hang on to it keep it in my stash maybe eventually i'm going to learn how to weave so that was several years ago so now I've learned how to weave. <laughs> so um, I warped up my loom. The scarf is, I still think it's too long. The ladies at Guild were so, so, so kind about it. And were like, no, 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 it's not too long, blah, blah, blah. Um, they were so nice about it. But like, honest to goodness, it's so long. Um, and Jeanette, our president, put it on. And she's really tall and it looked awesome on her. Um, 
when you wear it like this, it's sort of okay um, in length for me. I'm not that tall, that's part of the problem. But what I did was, as I was weaving, I was like, oh, I wanna spruce this up a little bit. And I threw in some English Lister locks. So then when I went to felt this and fold this and everything, um, the locks are sort of locked in there and stuck. Um, and it was an idea that I got from Debbie Handmade on Instagram. Is that your handle? She wrote an article for Shacked about about putting locks and Sayori weaving and everything into um, uh, in on Shacked's blog. Um, and I at first I was really only sticking to these natural colored locks, and I was really trying to stick with like stuff that was. Um, sort of very gentle but then I started throwing in yellow and purple and I threw in some bright red and I was just starting to have like some fun with it because I was like ah oh. because I realized about halfway through that the scarf was going to be way too long for me um I really like it um I fold it and everything and the and the felted fabric or the the fabric itself is is really cool I really like the finished fabric and it has a, a nice drape and a nice hand to it um and of course the because it's merino and Polworth, like it's it's really quite lovely to have it next to your skin, but um, I would probably do it shorter next time and wider um, because that's definitely sort of more how I like to wear my stuff. This did use the entire skein. I wove right up to the last bit so that I could use as much of it as I possibly could. And I only have about 15 yards left of the yarn just to keep as like a, a sample. So that was great because I, I wanted to sort of start stash busting. So this really turned out well in that sense. I may show it to my dad and see what he thinks because he's really tall and he likes these really long scarves because he doesn't find he can wrap it around his neck enough times otherwise. And he might actually really um, enjoy wearing it. It's a little bit artsy for him, artsy. I say that not in a bad way, just it, it's with the locks and everything, I don't know if he'd actually wear it, but I'm gonna ask him and um, I'll finish it off, get all my stuff, cut and woven and, and do everything that I'm supposed to do and uh, I'll show it to him and see what he thinks. The thing is is that this color, I'm going to toot toot puff puff for a minute, um, this this color looks really good on me. <laughs> so I was thinking if I find that I just don't wear it because it is too long, I might actually cut it and um, make an infinity cowl for myself and like sew it so that I can double it. Um, because um, I really like the colors and it would be really nice to wear it. And that brings me to a big project that our guild is gonna do as a guild along. Um, we're going to, um, a group of us are really interested in processing a fleece and sewing a coat. So how do you get from the fleece to the coat? You have to weave. <laughs> so we're thinking about a couple of us really want to do from the raw fleece or from the rovings, whatever. Um, spin, dye, weave, sew said coat. Um, and the colors of the coat that I want to do are um, either forest green or navy blue. So this, if I do the forest green, would look awesome with it. So kind of on the fence. I don't know what I'm going to do. But... I will figure it out. <laughs> but in the meantime, the plain weave and this yarn worked beautifully. So I'm really happy with how it turned out other than the length. And the reason why it ended up being too long is that I had measured my warp. And because we have two big dogs and we have two kids under five, <laughs> um, the peg, I was, I have a rigid heddle and so I was warping it and with the peg, it just, it got moved somehow and I was warping and I was like, this is longer than I had measured. And good lesson that I need to be warping on two items that can't move or get a warping board. So I actually got a warping board from a friend of mine. She gave it to me for $10, which is awesome. Um, it was just a handmade jobby and she uh, said I could have it. So um, I'm going to start warping on a warping board, I think, and give that a try and warp up my, my rigid heddle that way instead of using the peg because every single time it has moved. And it's because the dogs have laid down right there and they push the thing out of the way. Um, it's just frustrating, right, every time to have things moving around. So um, I'm definitely going to try a different method and hopefully I'll have some better luck with warping. So fingers crossed. <laughs> 
Okay, I am going to say goodbye. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, happy spinning. And I will, oh, and uh, April 1st, for those who have signed up, you will receive your uh, Patreon-only post for the new enhanced teaching content that's basically how I spin. So I hope for those of you who have signed up for that, that you enjoy that coming up in the next couple of days. Until next time, everyone, happy spinning. Bye.